So there's your voice. You know, it's no secret that I've been accumulating waste with all of my uh, processes that I've been doing. But it ends now. So right over here, all of my lead waste is there. At the, I have first converted it into lead carbonate and lead hydroxide by adjusting the pH using a combination of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. What I'm doing is I have a lead dioxide electrode and I have a copper cathode and over there I'm running about 2 amps of current. Now what's going to happen is this slurry will be reduced while this will be oxidized and you're probably wondering, I also put surfactants in here to avoid lead mist. Another thing I've also used to avoid lead mist is a Venturi scrubber which is right over here and there's also surfactants in there to prevent said Venturi scrubber from, you know, accumulating any mist. And to and this is actually very important. You know, there's a good reason why you have to precipitate all of your lead. Because right over here, I have some oxalic acid, right? Oxalic acid will form soluble oxalates when lead is, is encountered. So if I take from the very top of the solution, you will notice that nothing will precipitate when it hits the oxalic acid. If you see any precipitate form in this container, it means that you need to add more sodium hydroxide or carbonate or check the pH to make sure you didn't go over pH 10. O going over pH 10 would cause the plumbate ions to form, which is the plumbate anion that forms when you have uh, excess of uh, pH in the solution. It starts to dissolve the lead as this weird ion that is actually very important for plating my electrodes. Now, I'll show you an example of what will happen if there was soluble lead. So, I have prepared some fresh oxalic acid over here, and here's some sodium plumbate. If these two are mixed together, a white precipitate will form. Took a hot minute, but you can see that this is no longer clear. This white precipitate forming is something known as lead oxalate. Now, if you took your solution from there and it forms this kind of a precipitate, it means that you need to uh, add more sodium hydroxide or carbonate there in order to ensure that everything is precipitated. Because if you don't, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with some pretty toxic uh, spray that will come out when you electrolyze the solution. Now, just for safety precautions, I have these surfactants present in here and in the scrubber to eliminate any chance of spray. Now this Venturi scrubber creates less than ambient pressure and I, I have a, uh, I seal all the holes up but okay guys so we have an issue now over here over there in our uh, cell you notice that hydrogen is being generated no more is plating out so Turns out it's an issue with this thing. So what I've done is I've built another cell with a ring cathode made of foam with copper tape. I'm going to transfer all of this crap into here. I'm also going to dilute this electrolyte because we don't really need a concentrated electrolyte. It's useless. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow all this thing to selectively plate onto here. Meanwhile, the electrode on top will only be evolving oxygen. Now, this filming this process is kind of eh. So, instead, I'm just gonna do it and once it's all set up, we'll see it run. Thanks for all your support, you all. You can access more VitoBars. On uh, my Patreon, I have some available for people who subscribe to it. Yo, like that or it, yes. Girl, you got me shook from the way your body looks. Got me riding hooks, got me feeling like a rook. I don't do it by the book, but for you, I'll take a look. Don't know what your mama took, sweet and spicy like a cook, yeah. I'll keep it real, let's make
make a deal Buy you a meal if you just let me feel Get out your heels, grab on the wheel Back to my place at the top of the hill Don't have regrets, I know what's next She need a fresh, I'll be back in a sec Look at the legs, don't make me beg Back to the room, let me show you my best yeah. yeah, your body feels like taking on a drug You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Everything you do, I can't seem to get enough You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Touching on your body feels like taking on a drug You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Everything you do, I can't seem to get enough You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb could look at you all day Watch the way them hips sway Love your body so I pray Don't you dare take it away Can't control what I say Lost my mind cause your frame Hey girl what's your name Lit me up just like a flame Body in motion I feel the commotion Be on you like lotion I'm honest and broken I flow like the ocean I feel you were chosen To fix me I'm broken My heart that you stolen Hey, stay with me Play with me Lay with me Hate to see when you leave Chemistry feels like it's destiny I just want you laying next to me And I really don't want you to touch me on your body Feels like taking on a trip you got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Everything you do, I can't seem to get enough You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Touching on your body feels like taking on a drug You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Everything you do, I can't seem to get enough You got me feeling good, yeah, you got me feeling numb Okay guys, so now everything has been uh, properly put together. As you can see, this thing is running. I'm running it at 1 amp. Because when I put it to 2 amps, hydrogen seems to be like generated at the uh, electrode. The bottom electrode, which is not supposed to be. That's supposed to generate lead metal. So, I'm going to zoom in over here. So you guys can see that uh, we are producing some bubbles at the anode. However, it seems that we are still generating hydrogen bubbles which is going to cause some unwanted deposition to occur. I mean, I can't, I think it would make sense because some of this at the bottom is carbonate. So because some of this is carbonate, all this stuff at the bottom, right? We're getting rid of some carbon dioxide. Now, one funny thing is, as this runs, the electrode gets thicker. But at least I get a mix of getting both lead and lead oxides in with my stuff. At least, that's fine. <sighs> well... I'll just time lapse this to see what kind of monstrosity we end up with after some time. Alright, so it's been a while since we ran this thing, and we are getting our intended results, you can see over there, and we got a bit of our lead sponge. Now, it no longer settled out, and now we're actually running a slurry, but that's completely fine. Any lead dioxide that forms will be plated on the anode, and when that occurs, that will then fall back down to be reduced anyway by the cathode. So we're completely fine there. And also the voltage, current... We're running at the nice 5.1 volts at 1.03 amps. So yeah, this process is pretty good. You know, we're not consuming too much. And I promise if we go past 1 amp or past, you know, a little bit, we're going to end up with bubbles climbing up this thing, which is unintended. Right now, it's okay. So yeah. So guys, it's been running for three days. 
still in this stage, it's okay. Anyway, this video is gonna conclude itself because uh, it's gonna take over a week for all of this to finally get finished being refined. Of course, right now, it's just simply gonna sit here, but after like a week, maybe I'll make a part two of this whole uh, shenanigans about uh, turning the lead metal powder back into something, you know, usable. Maybe cast it into an electrode. No, I don't think I will do that. Most likely, I'll just probably re-dissolve it. Maybe try the thysoid method of making lead acetate. Just let it, you know, react in air since I have finely divided metal.